Hey everyone, welcome to Code Harmony. Today we are going to solve lead code problem ID 3355 zero array transformation one. This question has been asked in Google recently six times in the last three months, and it is based on the concept of difference array. Let's have a look on the problem statement. Here we are given an integer array nums of length n, and a 2D array queries where every query is having left index and right index. This is given to us, and for each query. We have to perform this operation. Select a subset of indices within the range, from left index to right index. Pick a subset of indices and decrement the value at those indices by one. This is the operation we have to perform. And they are saying that a zero array is array where all the elements are equal to zero, and we have to return true if it is possible to perform to transform nums. To zero array after processing all the queries sequentially, otherwise return false. Okay, whatever queries are given to us, we have to perform all the queries, and in every query, we are picking couple of indices from this range and decrementing the value by one. In short, in other terms, we are going to decrement the value by one. If it is already zero, we are not going to decrement it. Otherwise, we will be decrementing it. And after all the queries, we have to tell whether we can transform this nums array to zero array or not. Let me show you the inputs. Input will some look like this. A nums array is given to us. Apart from that, m number of queries are also given. In this example, it's already one, but yeah, m number of queries we can have, and we have to perform all the queries on this array. In this query, first item is left index, and the second item is right index. If I mark the indices zero, one, two, it means starting from l equal to zero to r equal to two, we can perform the query. And what is that query? Decrement the value at that index by one. I can decrement the value; it will become zero. There is no need to decrement the value; it's already zero. And in this case. I'm also going to decrement the value; it will become zero. So after performing one query, there is only one query. So after performing all the queries, I'm able to get the zero array. So yeah, in this case, I'm going to return yes. So this is my problem statement, which is given to us, and we have to figure out the solution for that. Before going further into the solution, if I just directly ask you, what is the naive approach? What is the brute force for this solution? That will be covering up all the m number of queries, and for every query, go from index l to index r and decrement the value. And once you have performed m number of queries, just see whether the nums array is zero or not. In short, we can perform m number of queries, and every query can go till the range of n. In the worst case, let's say starting index to ending index. So in total, the time complexity. In the worst case, can go till order of m into n, number of queries into number of items in the nums array. So this is the brute force, and this is something we can improve using difference array. What difference array helps us is it helps us do the range updation query in order of one time. Let's say in this example, array is something like this. And queries, starting from start index, go to end index and increment this value in all the values. The previous example we were decrementing, but here let's consider that we have to increment the value. And after incrementing, we have to tell what is the state. See, in this case, if it is one query, I can directly go through the iteration to the iteration. But let's say if I am getting m number of queries, then For every query, I can't afford order of n time per query. I have to improve this time, and improving it to almost constant time per query, so that I can efficiently perform m number of queries. So this is something we can get from difference array concept. In this technique, what we usually do is, let's say the array is zero, all the elements are zero, and this is my uh, Query. This is my starting index. This is my ending index, 
and this is the increment factor. If I mark the indices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, starting index is 1, ending index is 2. So this is the range that I have to modify and I have to increment the value by 3. If I just do the iteration directly, it is again going to take order of n time or in the worst case order of n time, otherwise order of right minus left plus 1. If I do some kind of magic like uh, if I increment the value at index i, let's say this is index i, by increment factor plus 3, it is 3. And apart from that, let's say the second element is j. And then I decrement that value from index j minus 3. That is minus 3 at this position. The array will look like this from 5 times 0 to it will look like this 0 3 0 minus 3 0 now after this array if I just do the prefix of this array it will something look like this 0 3 3 then again 0 then again 0 this is the final array and in this final array you can see that we have updated the values from the range L to R 1 to 1 to 2 this is the concept behind difference array. Step 1. Let's go to the step 1. For each query, array of i increment by inc and array of j plus 1 decrement by inc so that at the time of taking up the prefix sum, it will compensate. And the step 2 is just take the prefix sum array. Now this is the idea we are going to use to solve this problem and if you are still not comfortable with this, you can go and check out the detailed explanation on this difference array range update query in order of one time and I have also solved a problem lead code 370 range addition it's a premium lead code question but you can have a look on the problem statement in the video itself so you can go and check out this video to have a detailed understanding on difference array now let me show you what we are going to do to solve this array, solve this problem 101 so this is the state which is given to us and to this given state let's not just let's skip this nums array and take another array of the same size with all the elements as 0 0 0 0 now the problem statement looks similar to the difference array concept where we are given a 0 index 0 item array and the query is something like this starting to ending an increment factor increment factor is 1 in this case so there is no need to mention that. So starting from index 0 to 2, I have to increment the value by 1. If I just do the increment blindly, indices are 0, 1, 2. 0 to 2, I have to go. So at index 0, I will increment the increment factor. Increment factor is 1 in this case. So it is 1. At index 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1 does not exist. So if 2 plus 1 does not exist, there is no need to increment that. What I am doing is I am applying this form, these two formula. Array of i is incremented. Array of j plus 1 is decremented. Updated state is 1, 0, 0. Now this is the updated state. And this updated state is going to give me the final array by doing the prefix. If I do the prefix of it, it will be something like this, 1, 1, 1. And now, once we have performed all the queries, I can check the final array, whether the final array can contain this nums array or not. If this final array can contain this nums array, it means that we can achieve this nums array, right? So this final array showcase that this is the difference. Difference from 0, 0, 0. Every item, we can have a maximum difference of 1. So we can easily achieve this one we can achieve this one by not doing any operation we can achieve this one as well so this is the intuition and the approach behind this algorithm so here if let's say we are having m number of queries and this is n in size so every query for every query what i'm doing is let's say the array is something like this a double r array of i plus equal to increment factor here in this case increment factor is 1 and array of j minus equal to 1 
where j plus 1 is less than n. So this is the formula that I have to use for each query. For all queries, just apply this formula and after that compare the given array with the prefix array of it. The time complexity to perform this operation is order of 1. So order of 1 per query. And in the end, we are doing a prefix of it, this array. And this array is of size n. And every query is having order of 1 time. In total, we are having m number of queries. So the time complexity of the final approach will be order of m plus n in this case. Order of m plus n. But in the worst case, in the sorry in the brute force approach what we were having is order of m into n from quadratic to linear we have improved a lot and now what about the space complexity we can ignore the space complexity as well but for now just to keep it simple take another array of size 0 so for that i am taking order of n time so i did this solution in order of m plus n time and you can ignore this space as well by applying a modification to the existing array but i am not changing the existing array so it's a linear time solution using difference array technique let's uh, code this approach here first of all i am going to take a array of size uh, similar to the nums array array is equal to new integer of size n and n is the size of nums array nums dot length and this array is initialized with 0 and I'm going to perform every query on this array in teaser array queries. Every query in queries, uh, queries consisting of starting and ending, int start, let's say start is i, query 0, int j, j is query of 1. Now we have to apply the difference array concept where uh, in the array at index i i am going to increment it by the increment factor that is one in this case and for a double r j plus one i am going to decrement it and decrement it by the same value but before that we also have to check whether the j plus one is less than n or not now my difference array is ready and i have to compare the prefix of this uh, array with nums if i'm going to take a prefix of this array let me just directly compare the first value and the first value uh, will definitely be there because the length is at least one now in this case if a double r which is my newly formed array a double r of zero is less than nums of zero in this case just directly return false it means that the difference that we can perform is less than this and let's compare the other indices as well int i equal to 1 i less than n i plus plus in this case what is the prefix value array of i plus equal to array of i minus 1 first of all i have prepared the prefix and now prepare like compare this value with the nums of i this value should be greater than nums of i but in this case if this value is less than nums of i it means we cannot achieve nums of i so directly return false otherwise if you are not able to return false just it means we will definitely get the answer return true so this is the difference array concept I have applied and after that the prefix array I am going to compare it with the terms array. And this array you can also call it difference array that this much difference we can achieve. Uh, that difference is less than this one so we cannot achieve it achieve the zero array otherwise zero array is achievable. Let's run our sample test cases. Sample test cases are passed I am submitting the problem. It got submitted successfully. Uh, I hope you understood the approach. If in case you get some uh, doubt, I highly recommend you watch the difference array video first and then let me know if you are not able to understand anything. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.